Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. Today we're going to build a very simple tool tray uh, for my CNC. And I don't know if you can see there, I'll try not to spill the contents, uh, but there it is. It's actually designed to fit in a drawer, which is just here underneath the CNC. And it fits exactly across there. Uh, I can shut the drawer when it's not in use. Now, in order to do the design work, I'll be using uh, VCarve Pro, um, and uh, I will then send that to this XCarve CNC uh, using the universal G code sender. Now, this is a simple project, and I don't intend to uh, labour the demonstration of the VCarve Pro side of it. I'm going to rattle through there fairly rapidly. However, uh, there will be one new element which I've not shown in any previous videos, and that is using arrays in VCarve Pro. And the idea of the array is that you would just draw a one toolpath uh, section here for, say, one of these little cutouts, and then you'd reproduce it. You'd copy it across uh, the whole thing and say, I want 15, 20, whatever it is of these. And the same up here. Uh, and uh, actually also uh, technically the same for these two long channels which are there. Now when I started this I had my piece of wood just a little bit longer here and the reason for that was that I wanted to be able to trim it to fit in my drawer exactly. So I wanted to do all the carving first and then trim it to fit the drawer. So in the various shots you'll see of the cutting process uh, you will see this piece being just a little bit longer uh, than it is now. Right, well the first thing to do is create a new file and it's a single sided job, very simple. Uh, my width of my tray is actually 419 millimetres, uh, slightly awkward, um, should have been 420 but that's the width of the drawer. And uh, my height of my workpiece will be 180 millimetres and the thickness it's actually 16 millimetres thick. Just check everything else, that's fine. It's a piece of walnut, so I'll click OK. So there's my workpiece uh, represented. Now, for simplicity, I'm going to put some guidelines uh, on here. Uh, I know already uh, the sizes of the slots that I want to create. For the ones at the top, I want them to be 56 millimeters high. And I, I know uh, roughly where they're going to go. Uh, they're going to go quite near the top. And I'm going to put in a guideline just short of the surface, which represents the top of where they're going to go. That's at 172. And the lower guideline is 116, which then gives me a height for my a top line uh, of slots of 56 millimeters. Now I want to do the same for the lower line of slots and I've already worked this out. I want the top of them to be at about uh, 103. If you notice that uh, this clicks up in twos when I'm doing guideline, I want it to be 103. If I right click on the guideline I can now put in the exact amount, one, zero, three. Apply, and I can close that. So that guideline now is at 103. I'll now bring down the lower part of that guideline, which I want at 28. So those are the guidelines which will allow me to do my top array of narrow slots and my bottom array of slightly wider slots. Now in order to do a slot I'm going to use the rectangle tool and initially I'm just going to plonk one in here. I'm not worried about its detail but you notice it's snapping uh, to those guidelines. Now these top ones I want to be the same width as the cutter which is 6.5 3.5. So there's my width. I'm going to type in 6.35. Notice the height is 56, which is what we want. 
so I'm happy with that. Let's say apply. Now I now need to have a whole bunch of these and I want them centered. And I've done some calculations and I've worked out that I actually want 31 of these. I'm just going to close that. That still highlighted that original one. Uh, I'm now going to the array feature here. And uh, you can see there's my object. It's been captured in this part here. I do want one row and I want a total of 31 of them. Now the gap between, um, I haven't actually worked this out, but let's see what it looks like with a gap of 4 millimeters. That gap is not enough. So I'll undo that by doing Control Z. Let's make that 6.35. Oh, that looks pretty good. Now, there, there's a nice uh, array of my top slots. Now, I'll close that. Now, what I want to do is make sure that these are centered to the workpiece. So I now go to this tool, which is Align the Selected Objects. And I want to align these centered to the material. There's Align to Material. Uh, I can get it to the dead center in the x and y direction. I can get it dead center in the y direction, but I want this dead center across uh, the, the width. So there we go. That's actually done it. And I can now close that. I'm now going to deselect those pressing the escape key. So that's my top line done. I'm now going to go down to do the wider slots down here. Now these are going to be 75 high and just by drawing it between those two guidelines I've got 75 and this time I want my width to be 12 millimeters. So there's my width at 12 millimeters. Close that and I'm now going to go to the array tool again and this time my quantity here is 25 altogether and again I'm not sure what the gap should be um, I'll just try 6.35 and see what happens. Woo, that's no good. Try a gap of 4. And that looks pretty good to me. Uh, that's all of them there within that space. So that's a gap of 4. Um, I could have worked that out with a calculator, but I knew it was going to be uh, somewhere close to that figure. So I'm going to close that. And I'm now going to center those exactly the same way we did before. Now, if you watch this time, you'll see them move as I center it. There they are, centered. So I can now close that. So I'm now just going to create uh, two very simple uh, rectangles, uh, which uh, one will be at the bottom here, which I'll do now. Now, this one, uh, I want this to be um, 12 millimeters high, so that's that figure there needs to be 12, and well, I think I'll just tidy up the, the, the length of it, I don't want it quite that long, I'll make it 396 and apply. Close that, and I again want to centre that across the workpiece, that's fine. And the top one is going to be exactly the same as that, so a simple way would be would be to copy that. Copy. And now I'm going to paste it. Well, that is uh, a new selection, as you can see. I'm moving it up. And I want this to be roughly there. Now I've actually measured where I want it to go. And I want it to go actually on a line which is 128. I'm just going to deselect it for now. Uh, if I bring a new guideline down at 128. There's a guideline. I'm now going to select that object. And I'm now going to move it down to that guideline. 
that is centered because this one is centered here. So that's all the drawing done. It's about time I saved this. So I'm doing save as. So there are tool tray two done. And now we, it's time to do the tool paths. Now I'm going to start with these narrow ones at the top here. I'm going to select them all, taking care not to select the larger slot that runs through them all. So that's all the narrow tool slots. So those are my selected items and I'm going to choose the pocket tool path here. Um, luckily my correct tool is actually set, it's a 6.35 quarter inch ball nose. Uh, but if I needed to change the selection I can go to this menu here and you can see this is one that I've created because I put my initials after it. Um, you can change these parameters and rename them, create new ones uh, very easily. And you can change the cutting parameters, feed rates and so on here. I'm not going to change that, I've already set it. So that's okay. Um, there's not a lot else I need to do. The cut depth I've set at 4mm up there. Uh, I've selected my tool and I'm now going to go down here and give it a name and I'm going to call this Ball Nose 635. I'm going to calculate it and there's my calculated view. I'm going to preview it and you can see that it's exactly what I'm expecting uh, and now I'm going to close that and I'm going to save it. And I've got my name, which is Borno635, and that's going to be passed into this directory. Save. So that's it. That's that saved. I can close that. I can now go back to my 2D view, and I can deselect those narrow ones. Now, I want to do the, the wide ones. Now, all of these wide ones, that array, plus the, the long one there and the long one here are all the same and technically I could do all of those all in one toolpath but I'm not. Just to continue the demonstration I'm going to select these, I'm going to go to the pocket toolpath again, I need a, a new tool this time, I want my 9.5 ball nose and uh, I'm happy with the parameters there. Uh, my cut depth, I think I'll make this five uh, millimeters. Um, and then I'm going to go all the way down here, give it a name. And these are the wide slots and it's uh, the 9.5. So I'll just call it 95. Calculate. There they are, preview them, and you can see that's what we're expecting. So I'm happy with that, I can close that, I can save this, uh, note that I'm saving it as G code, uh, I did this before, I may not have pointed it out, but that's my post processor there, save it, there's the name, save, that's fine, so it's, everything's there, good so far. And now we go back to the 2D view, and I've got those, press escape to deselect those, I've got this rectangle, uh, press the shift key and click on this rectangle, uh, I'm going to do those as one tool path, there we go. Uh, it's the same tool as before, the same depth as before, uh, and I'm, all I've got to do now is to go down here, give it a name, I'll call it long slots. 95. Calculate, and there's the preview, and that is now exactly what we're expecting. And if you see that, that looks pretty much like uh, the tool tray I showed you at the beginning. So I'm going to close that and now save it. It's the uh, G code post processor, save toolpath. There we go. So that's everything created. All we've got to do now is cut them. And I'm just going to do one final save. So everything is saved and I can now close the program down.